What we have for you here today is the ASUS VivoBook S16 S3607Q. Now, this video is going to be about me rambling about this laptop only, so uh, it's going to be a rather different video compared to what we do usually for laptops. So the reason why we're doing this video is because this laptop in particular is, uh, I would say, a rather weird turn of events that made this laptop possible. So as you can see here, the screen, 16-inch OLED screen, it's magnificent. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1200 pixels at 60 hertz maximum, which is actually very good for its price. So as you can see here, for the maximum brightness level, we do have somewhere around like 300 nits, which is actually adequate enough for indoors usage. And for the color accuracy, we are getting virtually 100% for both sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamma coverage. And the Delta E number might be a bit high, but it's an outlier since the average is so low. Now, other than the magnificent display, this laptop is actually using the Snapdragon X chipset. Yes, the Snapdragon X, X126100 for the CPU and for the GPU, it's the X145. So by looking at this, it is using the base version Snapdragon X chipset with, of course, 16 gigs of RAM, which I think is not really sufficient because even while doing nothing on the laptop with just Google Chrome open, it's consuming like 12 gigs of RAM. We have already did a lot of videos talking about the Snapdragon X chipsets on laptops, so you can watch our videos at the top right corner there or down in the description below because there are more than one video. Uh, most importantly, I just want to point out two things. Number one, if you want to do anything more graphically intensive, like editing a simple video on DaVinci Resolve, this laptop will struggle. Yeah, rendering videos will take forever. And uh, if you want to play games, which is my second point here, do expect some graphical glitches here and there, or maybe just not the best performance because, uh, because it is using Windows on ARM, the compatibility is weird. Just take a look at Wuthering Waves here. When I booted up the game, on top of all of the epilepsy that I'm getting here, I should actually give you guys an epilepsy warning. Yeah, other than the flickering lights, you also have to keep in note that the frame rate isn't particularly stellar either. So yeah. But other than that though, if you just want to use this laptop to watch videos, uh, read your emails, maybe browse social media, anything like that, then this laptop is actually fine. The main highlight, once again, is the display. So you're going to watch a lot of movies and whatever you want on this magnificent 16-inch OLED display. If you want to type stuff, then okay, the keyboard is actually not too bad. It's very springy, but also nothing different from other VivoBook laptops. Now, the battery life of this laptop is going to be magnificent because it does have a 71-hour battery inside and combined with the very low-powered Snapdragon X1 chipset, you are going to get more than a day's battery life out of this laptop with a single charge, of course. I think you can add another M.2 SSD inside. I'm not too sure. I'll show you some footage of the laptop being open here. Um, one thing is for sure, the RAM cannot be upgraded. So as for the ports, this laptop actually has a lot of magnificent ports. You have double 40 gigabits USB-C port. These are all USB 4 ports. And then you also have a single 5 gigabits per second USB-A port on both sides as well, left and right. So um, one thing that you have to realize is that this laptop does not use any barrel jack or whatever to charge it. So you can use your power bank, maybe something like this to charge your laptop as well, which is really convenient. And I'm just glad that every laptop is now using USB PD. So yeah, it, it just makes things easier because a lot of our phones are also charged using USB PD. So that's about it. This laptop is real simple. The design is real sleek as well. Real thin, quite lightweight. I'm not sure what's the exact measurement, but it's not the lightest, but it is light enough, I would say. And uh, if you're looking for a humongous OLED screen, 16 inch OLED screen, with magnificent colors and also a superbly long battery life, then you can consider getting this laptop. The price is 3,699 ringgit Malaysia, which is, um, I would say I never saw this kind of price for 
this kind of display on a laptop before. It's just that since it is using a Snapdragon X chipset, you have to really know what you're getting into before purchasing. For example, uh, I did discuss this with someone else and they say that this laptop would be perfect for students, but what type of students? If you're doing graphic design, then maybe you can because Photoshop and uh, Affinity has ARM versions. Video editing, probably not because even DaVinci Resolve is kind of struggling here. Um, maybe if you think of engineering students, then I would say absolutely not because if you have apps like, let's just say MATLAB or something like that, I'm not sure if this laptop can handle it. So yeah, there you have it. If you have any other questions regarding this laptop, then leave them down in the comment section below. If you want to check the list of apps compatible with Windows on ARM, then I'll leave a link down below as well. But do take note that compatibility does not mean that it will run well. It just means that the app can boot. That's it. If it's running smooth or not, that's another question for another day. So yeah, for the price, I would say you can consider this laptop, but you really do have to know what you're getting into. So yeah, ask all your questions down in the comment section below because uh, Snapdragon X chipsets has been out for quite some time, but a lot of the issues are still there. So yeah.